All right, guys. So, um, quick show of hands, if you may. Hands up if you've got a membership site up and running. One, two, three, four, five, six of you. So maybe, I don't know, 10%, uh, not even 10% of the room, 5% of the room, something like that. Okay, so some of this might be a little irrelevant for you. Okay, but please stay in your seats because <laughs> most of it is going to be bang on target, I promise. Um, so I will, I will preface this little session here today with um, the, I guess, the, 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 the I don't know, the commitment to you that I am not an expert on this subject, okay? Um, I, in fact, actually, up until six years ago, I was very much a brick and mortar business owner. I still am a brick and mortar business owner. Um, but I only got started online in January 2010, all right? Um, so we're going on almost seven years now. Uh, it's been a great seven years. I blog, I podcast. Uh, I get at current numbers, probably around 120,000 or so unique subscriber, uh, unique visitors rather, to my blog every month. Uh, I get about a quarter of a million downloads for my, da for my uh, podcast every month as well. So good numbers, right? And I don't take them for granted in any way whatsoever. But for the longest time, through products and courses and services, I tried my best to try and serve my community in an ongoing basis. And I struggle, quite frankly, because there's only so much you can do through blog content, podcast content, uh, mastermind gatherings and all that sort of stuff. And I wanted to do something more full time. I wanted to do something that I could work with my community on on an ongoing basis. And that ended up being youpreneur.com, which is our membership site. And uh, it was established in September 2015. So we just celebrated our first year anniversary. And in that first year, We've brought together, at this point, and I checked it this morning, 432 members that are giving me $59 a month. Sound sexy? Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> it is. No, it is sexy. And I'll tell you why. Um, you know, for me, the big thing for me, this all came about, actually, because as I was traveling around the world speaking over the last five, six years, something Something inside of me really kicked me up the butt to put this together. But like a lot of entrepreneurs, I procrastinated. I second-guessed myself. I didn't know whether it was going to work. I didn't know whether it was worthwhile. I didn't know whether it was going to make me money. I didn't know whether people wanted it, quite frankly. But I started doing these little mastermind sessions. What's up, brother? Good to see you. I was wondering where I was going to bump into you. I thought they locked you up or something. Um, so, <laughs> so my issue was that I was going around doing all these little mini mastermind sessions whenever I was traveling to kind of like offset the costs of travel and things like that. I was building my speaking career because I didn't get, I didn't start getting paid for speaking until about three years ago. Like a lot of people, you speak for free. Exposure, apparently. It's all that exposure, right? So I was speaking for free for a few years and whenever I would go around and do that stuff, I would usually stay in one area for one or two extra days and hold a small mastermind event. So usually be around 10 people or so. And those 10 people would pay me anything between, I don't know, 300 to to $1,000, depending on where I was, or how small the group was, et cetera, et cetera, to offset those travel costs. But two things were happening every single time I put on one of those events. Number one, nine times out of 10, people wouldn't know each other, okay, when they first arrived for the day. Thank you. <laughs> Very pleasurable little crowd on the other side of the wall. Um, so that was the first thing. They didn't know each other, okay? But by the end of the day, they were all exchanging telephone numbers, Skype IDs, email addresses, and they had become friends throughout the course of one day discussing their business, their struggles, their plans, their, you know, their issues, because we do have a lot of issues, like mental ones as entrepreneurs. We struggle with a lot of stuff, right? The other thing that happened was, and this is the big one, the other thing that happened was, at some point throughout the course of the day, someone at that table was going to have a value bomb dropped on them from a huge height from somebody else at the table. Simply, that's what happens when you surround yourself with like-minded people. Nobody has a monopoly on good ideas, right? Nobody. I'm 100% sure that if we were to create 
a roundtable discussion with all the best business minds that you could potentially put together. Let's say we've got Elon Musk, Richard Branson, uh, Mark Cuban, you know, I don't know, whatever, me, because <laughs> obviously I'd be at that table, wouldn't I, right? I think, I think if we were to do that at some point, regardless of all the billions, all of the companies, all of the success that those guys have put together, one of them is going to drop a value bomb on one of the others. It was just what happened. So those were two things that were coming up over and over and over again. Number one, I realized nobody has a monopoly on good ideas. And number two, by the end of the day, we were curing entrepreneurial loneliness. And let's face it, it is a lonely journey, right? As a show of hands, at any point in the last six months, have you thought to yourself, man, I'm just so alone? Show of hands. I wish I had someone to talk to. I wish I had a sounding board. I wish I had someone to hold me accountable. That's a big thing, right? So I sat down. It was July 4, 2015. I had just finished a water balloon fight in the backyard of my best friend, Pat Flynn. Anybody know that guy? Yeah, OK. And as I threw my last water balloon, as if I had saved it just for this very occasion, and I pelted it into Pat's wife's face <laughs> at pretty much point blank range. We're talking maybe six or seven feet. Um, the kids then obviously you know, descended upon me with every balloon they could get. Um, she forgave me. We dried off, went into the house, into Pat's office, brewed a cup of coffee, and we started talking like we always do. And he asked me, what's next for you, man? And I said, I don't know. At that point, I just released Virtual Freedom, which became a, a bestseller. We're now at 50,000 copies of the book sold. Uh, if anybody was at uh, New, uh, New Orleans FinCon, you would have got a copy for free, because Phil bought everybody a copy for free. And I was kind of like in this moment of not really knowing what the next project was going to be, not really knowing what the next thing was going to be for me. And then he asked me, well, what do you want to do? And then we started talking about these little mini masterminds that was putting together and how I was curing entrepreneurial loneliness and helping people find friends and you know, all this sort of stuff. And then the word youpreneur came up. I would love to say that it was all me, but it wasn't. It was Pat. Because I said to him, I want to help small business entrepreneurs fill their businesses in a better environment with more fun and games attached to it but something that truly moves the needle for them on an ongoing basis. Not every now and then, not for one day, not for one afternoon, but on an ongoing basis. And that's when Youpreneur was born. I tried to register the domain name, youpreneur.com, that day, but somebody had already taken it. It took me about six months of negotiating with the guy who had never sent anything up to the interwebs on that domain, never did anything with it. He just sat on it and then fleeced me for a few grand for it. But I was that committed to the name. It just hit me. It just struck with me. And I put it together. We launched September 15. And we've just celebrated our first year anniversary. And now for the rest of the session, I'm going to tell you exactly how I came about putting it together, how I launched it, how I've marketed it on an ongoing basis, the struggles that I've had, the issues that I've had, uh, things that have worked, things that have not worked, and how you, if you want to create recurring, predictable income for yourself with your own communities, can do likewise. Is that okay? All right. So thank you for listening to me droning on with my little intro. All right. So, oh, and by the way, I'm not doing this bullet point form. That's not my style. This isn't a keynote, so I don't have one word on a slide with a nice pretty photo from the internet on it or anything like that. I'm going to go pretty fast, and I want to go through as many questions at the end of the session, all right? So what you'll see are screens like this. There are 11 of them. So I put all these talking points on each screen so that you can go ahead and take snapshots right here, right now, and walk away with them on your phone, OK? Because I don't give out my slides. It's not what I do as a speaker. So feel free to click and, and, and try and get my good side here. <laughs> OK, right? Feel free to click. And, and shoot these and blog about them and talk about them and have them as a bit of a workbook for yourself to work through them so that when you're setting up your own membership, you can go ahead and follow the steps. So the first thing is, why should we even consider launching a membership? Well, number one, you can leverage your authority. 
okay? If you're any kind of content creator, blogger, podcaster, videographer, whatever it is, you are building authority, right? We are a personal brand. Whether we want to admit it or not, we are. And we're all in the sales game. Was anybody at the uh, email panel with me on it yesterday? You, you see I bumped the crowd on that one? You're all in the sales game. And you're all selling yourself first and foremost. You want to become somebody's favorite. I said that yesterday. It really struck a chord with a lot of people. Got a lot of tweets on that. We do want to become somebody's favorite. And once that happens, that, that authority that we're building for ourselves, we then have the ability to be able to leverage it, not just through courses, not just through a book, but through a membership site as well. Something that a lot of people feel is the holy grail of online business because it is recurring and it is predictable and all the rest of it. We can create even further customer loyalty. Why? Because when somebody gives you their hard-earned money on an ongoing basis, they are invested. They're invested in themselves, first and foremost, but they're also invested in you as the leader of that community and the community as a whole as well. Thirdly, we want to launch a membership because of that long-term or that long-game mindset that I waffle on about way too much, but it's so, so important, particularly in the online business world where everyone's trying to make money real fast, okay? You can do that, but the chances are you're either gonna burn out or you're gonna piss people off because you're not delivering true value. But when you have a long game mindset, you know there's no hiding in a membership group. There's no hiding in a membership business. You have to deliver every single month over and over and over again. And that's why I love it so much. And we've talked about the attractiveness of recurring income and predictive income as well. Now, for me, somebody has large brick and mortar businesses and also does well online as an affiliate, as a coach, as a speaker, et cetera, et cetera, the idea of predictive income for me is beautiful because it's something I can truly rely upon one month after another. With course launches, you might have big spikes in sales, and you get all euthoric and happy, and then what happens when you close the cart? You stop making money, right? And you get all depressed and sad, and you start doubting yourself. No, oh, is it really worth it? I want to go home, seal the windows, and turn on the gas, and <laughs> all that sort of stuff, right? And then, but then what happens? You launch again, and the euthoric kicks in all over again. Predictive income is the way to go. So that's why we should be launching a membership. Why should you not launch a membership? It's not for everyone. Don't launch a membership if you want a quick profit. Yes, you're gonna get a spike in sales when you open the doors, without a doubt. Don't launch a membership if you want it to be passive, because let me tell you something right now, it ain't passive. Not even remotely passive. Okay, I'm in my forums at least three times a week. It's on my schedule. If it doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done, and that also includes conversing with my members inside the membership itself. It's not passive, which is why you'll never see Pat Flynn launch a membership. He, <laughs> he hates it, he really does. Don't launch a membership if you don't wanna serve. We wanna serve people. Stop selling. Some people actually don't even like selling. Some people can't sell, right? But when you're serving, you are actually selling, but you're doing it in a nice, soft way, where you're actually just helping people out regularly on an ongoing basis. Don't start a membership if you don't want to do that. Don't start a membership if you aren't thinking long term. When I launched Youpreneur, and I'll talk about the launch in a minute and how I did it, when I launched Youpreneur, I was saying live on Periscope, this is my next 10 years, minimum. I'm committed to this. I'm committed to my members. I'm committed to everything. This is my next 10 years. And let me tell you something, it resonated like crazy. People like that kind of commitment. Don't start a membership if you don't want to be committed. Hey, you guys coming in, take a seat. There's plenty of them, except the lovely lady rocking the baby. I appreciate the rocking situation. I was a baby at one point, and I have three of them myself. Although my oldest is so big, he could probably take me now in a fight. You know that, guys? Gents, let me just segue real quick. Hands up if you've got a teenage son. 
and you're a man, and you're a dad, right. There comes a day <laughs> when you look at your son and you say to yourself, shit, I think he might be able to take me now. I think it, that day came for me a few years ago. He's a personal trainer now, my son. He's got arms like this. It's ridiculous. Anyway, getting back to business, don't start a limb membership if you're not committed. If you're not thinking long term, if you're not committed, don't do it. At least don't do it now. And that's the beautiful thing about being entrepreneurs. It's not corporate America. It's not corporate job, is it? You can do what you want when you want to do it. So if it's not the right time now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be the right time maybe two, three years from now for you. But if you're not willing to commit properly to it, then don't do it. Let's talk about validating our ideas. So we want to validate the idea of the membership before we launch, okay? Don't worry taking a photo of this one. The full slide will come up in a minute. I've got a pretty picture coming in a second for you. So we survey our audience. Hands up if you've served a, surveyed your audience in the last six months. Oh, you guys are great. Usually when I speak, there's like nothing, right? You guys know the importance of asking your audience how they feel about whatever it is you're doing for them. If you don't, how can you know how they feel? And here's the beautiful thing. When we start creating content for them, regardless of whether it's behind a paid wall or on our blogs and our podcasts, when we start doing that, what happens? We're doing what we think they want and need from us, right? But once you survey them, you have a much clearer understanding as to where they are in their business growth or their lives or whatever it is. At that point, they tell you what they want and need from you. And that's when your content creation gets put on steroids because everything will start being so much more relevant to the people that you're creating it for. So you validate your membership idea in exactly the same way by surveying your audience. About, I think, three or four months before I launched Youpreneur, I sent out, I do an annual survey with my audience at chrisducker.com. And I sent out my annual audience, uh, my annual survey, there was lots of stuff in there, and then the very final two questions were, number one, if I was to start an online business community that had a recurring fee attached to it for membership, would you join, yes or no? Two options, no maybes, I want a solid number, right? The last question was, if you answered yes to the last question, how much would you pay for it? Zero to $35, 35 to $75, 75 upwards. Amazingly, it was bang smack in the middle. Everybody said that they pay between the 30, 35 to $75. Not everyone, but the majority rather, right? I thought they'd all be cheapskates, but they weren't, which was nice to know. So get vocal on your ideas. What I started doing was talking about it everywhere. Once I got that survey and I knew it was going to be a good idea, I started talking about it everywhere. And I follow this mantra, market like a magnet. Are you ready? There's a tweetable coming. Okay, at Chris Ducker, hashtag FinCon16. Market like a magnet, attract the best, repel the rest. <gasps> Bloody good, isn't it? It is, it's good. But seriously, that's what I do. Every piece of content I create, every blog post I publish, every podcast I, I launch, everything I do on YouTube, everything I do everywhere, I am marketing like a magnet as best as I can. Why? Because if you don't like me, if you don't like my style, if you don't like the way I am, the chances are you're never going to spend any money with me, right? So I want to attract the best, attract the right kind of people that are all about kind of what I'm about, my vibe, and what I'm all about, right? And then I want to repel the people that don't like me, don't like my style, don't think I can help them away from me. Why do I do that? Because those are the people, those time-sucking, time-wasting negative people that are going to put crappy comments on my blog, they're never going to share any of my content, they're never going to buy any of my products, and the chances are they're going to send me stupid emails telling me that I'm a waste of space. Don't be scared, and we talked about this yesterday in the email marketing panel, don't be scared to have a small list. There's nothing wrong with a small list. As long as they're opening all your emails, as long as they're sharing all your content, as long as they're buying all your product services and memberships, I don't care. I'd rather have a 1,000 people on my list 
that were highly engaged in terms, in terms of what I was all about than a great big huge list to try and blow up my ego. Trust me, I don't need a huge list to blow up my ego. <laughs> don't need it. Market like a magnet, attract the best, repel the rest. Quick Skype calls. I picked out about 10 random people that filled out that survey that answered the question, would they join, with a yes, and I got on to them via Skype for about 15 or 20 minutes a pop within the space of a couple of weeks, and I found out exactly what they wanted out of a membership from me personally. I even tested out certain uh, deliverables, monthly deliverables, and I can tell you about what I do every month for my, mem for my members as well. So quick Skype calls, that's so gold by the way. That's so gold. Focus groups are still used today for a very good reason, aren't they? They work. Get on the Skype, chat with some of your prospects. Then I tested with a very, very empty, that minimal viable product, okay? Very simple landing page. I sent it out to a very small segment of the list of people that said yes, that they would order or rather join my membership site. You see where I'm going here, getting more and more relevant as the validation process goes on, okay? We sent it out to probably about 150 or so people with a fake buy now button, which was trackable on Google Analytics. And when they clicked it, it just went through the page saying, thank you very much, we'll get in touch with you as soon as the membership's available. But that buy now button also had a launch price of $49, very clearly marked on it as well. So they knew what they were getting into. And out of 150 or so people, we had about 50 or 60 or so people actually hit that button to buy into the membership. 30, 40%, not bad, right? You see the why it's so relevant. It's important to validate and be as relevant as you can as you push people through the process. And then I went live with it, and I went live in a huge way, okay? But in the background, me and my team, and I'll go, don't worry, I'll talk about the live stuff in a minute, but in the background, me and my team were already working on building out the community itself. We were thinking big picture. Where do we want to be in a year? Where do we want to be in three years, five years, and that 10 year mark? We were thinking long term. We were asking for advice from everyone that I knew personally, and I'm very blessed to have a very, very solid circle of friends in our entrepreneurial world online, and I was talking to all of them, those that had memberships and those that didn't have memberships. What works, what doesn't work? What kind of software should I be using? What kind of services should I be using? That's what me and my team were doing behind the scenes. I also joined three other membership sites with one of my friend's credit cards. <laughs> Didn't want to be tracked. It's very CIA-ish, right? But I did that because I wanted to go under the radar. Right? I do have a little bit of a profile online, and I wanted to go under the radar. And I went in, and I involved myself in the community, I looked at their content, I saw how easy it was to be onboarded as a member, I looked at all those things, and then we started planning out our own membership launch as well. And, oh please, your email set up, the single most important part of this entire process. More important than what platform your site's gonna sit on, more important than what plugins you're gonna use and how pretty your site's gonna look. If you don't have a reliable email set up for onboarding, and obviously uh, communicating with your members in an ongoing basis, you're gonna die. We screwed up big time, right out of the gate. And it cost us, I'm pretty sure it cost us a good bunch of members. So we're now, everything's on Infusionsoft, everything can be tagged, we know exactly who's opening what, when, and how much, and all the rest of it, and that makes all of the onboarding and all of that, that ongoing communication so much easier. All right, so pay special attention to the email setup. Okay, let's talk about content. Should we have content in our membership site or should we not have content? There are plenty of membership uh, uh, sites out there that have zero content inside of it. It's all about the discussion, okay? It's all about the discussion. I decided, well, I've got a ton of content. Every year in the Philippines, I hold an event called Tropical Think Tank. It's a one week jaunt of business learning, masterminding, cocktail drinking, scuba diving, snorkeling, and embarrassing ourselves as much as possible. But every single year that I've done it, 
We filmed everything with three different cameras in HD, and I've never used the footage. I knew that something would prompt me to use it, and this was it. All those guys, and anybody you can think of online, except for real AAA listers, like maybe Brendan Burchard and Tony Robbins and all those guys, they haven't come out to the Philippines for my event yet, but maybe they will do in the future. But everyone else, Pat Flynn, Amy Porterfield, Brian Clark, all these big, big ballers in our online business world, they've all come out to the Philippines, they've all given incredible keynotes, and we have recorded every one of them. So I said, we're gonna start with that content, and then we're gonna build it out. Every month, there's a new expert chit-chat video where I sit down with one industry expert and talk about how they've grown their business and the lessons that they've learned that they can partake upon our members. There's also what we call one of our process blueprint documents, which is like an infographic on steroids where we show you step-by-step -step process on one particular aspect of building your business. It might be how to create a high converting landing page. It could be how to market your book when, when you've launched it. A whole bunch of other stuff that we've covered. And there's more and more and more. If you want to see the entire thing, go to youpreneur.com and check out the sales page, okay? Oh, by the way, the buy now button does work. Hashtag just saying. Okay, what we wanted to do with our content is we wanted to focus on solving the problems. Where do you think I learned about the problems that my would-be members were gonna have? Any ideas? The survey. All right, it's coming full circle now. So we just go ahead and create content that we know the solves the problems that people are already experiencing. High value all the way. People are paying for this. This isn't a blog post. That's not to say that your blog post content can be crappy and you can get away with it. You can't. But this is premium content. You cannot find it anywhere else. We do not share it anywhere else. High value, exclusive, and it's ever evolving and ever changing content. Now, this right here is, the, is about as unpassive as you can get for a membership site. Every single week, we give people something new. You don't need to do that. I know one particular person that has a membership that charges $10 more than I do on a monthly basis. We're now at $69. We'll talk about pricing in a minute and how we went from 49 to 69. But I know one guy who runs a membership site, charges $10 more, and has one 60-minute video that goes live on a monthly basis. That's it. Just one. And he's still very successful. So you can either come up with your own decisions as to whether you want a lot of content or not. I wanted some. Let's talk about the launch. OK, you've got to set a date, and you stick to it. Hands up and be honest. If you use a digital calendar, and I'm assuming the very large majority of you do, and every now and then, you go to your calendar and you just drag and drop to the next day. Oh, I can't do that today, I'll do it tomorrow. I can't do that today, I'll do it Friday. Hands up if you do it. Come on, don't lie, don't bullshit. Come on, be honest. I still do it myself every now and then, right? But when you set a date to launch your membership site, you set a date and you stick to it. I kept myself very, very accountable by creating a VIP launch list, and I did that using Periscope. Remember that thing about a year and a half ago that everyone went goo-goo over? Okay, it's still a great lead source for me as well, by the way. But on Duckerscope, which was my Periscope show, very original, I know, what I would do is I would share where I was in regards to building the community at the same time as providing solutions to people's problems. Three tips to be more productive working at home. Five tips to be able to grow your email faster. And so on and so on and so on. And I did that almost daily for a full month before we launched. And in that last couple of weeks before we launched, I talked about the fact that youpreneur.com was coming on a specific date, September 1, every single time I was live on Periscope. And then I would say to them at the end of that Periscope broadcast, hey, as you guys are still here, you haven't clicked away, I want you to go ahead and sign up to this email list. And I would hold up a little postcard, and it just said chrisducker.com forward slash youpreneur. It was a secret URL. I never tweeted it. I never put it on Facebook. I never did anything with it outside of my live Periscope broadcast. So I knew everybody going on that list was coming from my live Periscope broadcast, that they saw me actually give it out live. By the time we launched youpreneur, we had just over 500 people on that list. 500 people, not only that wanted to hear about the launch, but 500 people that knew exactly what we were launching 
and exactly when we were launching. Gold, right? Seriously, gold. It was huge. It was like word of mouth marketing without the word of mouth, but on steroids. I was so excited about this 500 odd people. And let me tell you what the results were in a minute. Take a quick snapshot of this one. This is the, the fourth slide here. Then what I was doing, I was enlisting the help of others to help spread the word. Again, I'm very blessed. And I don't take it for granted. I'm very blessed that some of my friends shared the fact that my membership was coming and that I should visit my blog, get on my main mailing list to find out more about it. Very, very blessed. Remember, guys, sincerely, relationships should be treasured, not used. Don't think about what you can do with somebody sitting next to you or at the bar that you meet tonight or the mixer last night or whatever it is. Don't think, oh, I need to get close to this person because they've got a big email list. They might be a JV of mine. Has anybody ever felt like that? Like, I feel like that sometimes. People, and I can feel it. I can smell the BS a mile away. It's kind of like I feel like I need to take a shower after. It's not right. But if I develop relationships where I have over many years, I know that people will help spread the word. I know that people will talk about my stuff, and I'll do exactly the same thing, because that's what friendship's all about. Relationships should be treasured, not used. Don't forget that. And then I treated the launch itself like an event. Now, I treat every piece of content that I launch like an event. And I'm not going to go into every bit of detail in regards to what I do in regards to that. But for me, this launch of, of, of this thing that was going to be the next 10 years of my life, man, I didn't stop talking about Youpreneur for uh, 90 days after I launched it, literally. I hardly got any sleep the first two or three days after we launched because I was consistently out there talking about it all the time with everyone. And I enlisted the help of my new members to do exactly the same thing as well. When we launched, let me go back, when we launched, out of that 500 people that were on that VIP list, we had 132 people sign up. And I didn't email them. What I did, it was, sorry, I didn't email them a link to the page. I emailed them saying that I was going to be live on Periscope because that's where I found them, or they found me, whatever way you want to look at it, at this particular time to talk about the launch of Youpreneur, and I was going to give them a behind the curtain look, first look. Now obviously I appreciate there might have been some people that just came in because the broadcast was public, but usually when I went live on, on Periscope, I would get 40, 50 people within the first couple of minutes, and it would go up a little bit, and it would probably normally average out around about 100 or so people. That night when I went live, I had over 300 people live for almost an entire 45 minute period. By the end of that 45 minute period, I had 132 people that had paid me $49 to join. So the validation is very important. The launch of the event is very important as well. But then there's ongoing marketing. The big question here is, do you leave your membership doors open for people to discover and join whenever they want? Or do you do a big launch and then close the doors? For the first year, we were committed to leaving the doors open. We wanted to see what we could do from an ongoing marketing perspective. And we've got 432 members as of our first anniversary, right? Next year, I'm closing the doors. This is a 10-year plan. If you don't try, you don't know. So at the end of this year, we'll do one more little mini launch, and then we'll close the doors through to March. There'll be a wait list that people can join. Then they're going to go into a launch funnel, and we'll see whether that creates the f more amount of people in three months or rather in three days or one week than I would normally get in those three months of the, of the year. You've got to try new things all the time, right? You have to. So from an ongoing perspective, you're going to leave the doors wide open. You've got to talk about ongoing traffic. You've got to build up lead magnets and opt-ins. You've got to run Facebook ads, and I've only really done a very small amount of that. Webinars have been huge for me. Anybody doing live webinars? And how have they been for you in regards to the sales? I'm curious. A couple of people shout out. Jeff. The pearls of wisdom of, your, of our very own Jeff Rose, everybody. Uh, they work. <laughs> they do work. You're absolutely right, brother. They do work. But worked, what works even better is getting them in on a great, relevant lead magnet and then having them go into a sales marketing funnel. 
okay? And we're about to go really hardcore focused on this for Youpreneur in the next few months. They opt in, then we qualify them with a very, very small purchase, $5, $7, $10, whatever you want to put it, right? Once we know that they've actually got money and they're willing to spend it, we're going to hit them over the head with a one-time offer for membership, okay? We're going to do very, very small amount of public outreach for membership in the remaining of this year. We're going to go with this sales marketing funnel idea instead. So opt-in into small amount trip wire type product. So we might go from one of our process blueprints on how to market your book, for example, as the opt-in, which is just a PDF download, through till a $7 product, which can be a 45-minute workshop on how to get your book to rank number one in an Amazon category, for example, all right? And then they get the pitch to become a member of the, master, of the uh, membership group. Does everybody follow that? It's important to try and be as relevant as possible, though, okay? Uh, 10 reasons why you should be using Facebook ads to grow your business online. Opt-in. 45-minute video for $7. How to set up your first Facebook ad to grow your business. See the relevancy factor? Pitch into the membership. You bought this. You downloaded that. By the way, we've got five more modules inside our membership, amongst other things, that focus on using Facebook ads to grow your business. The relevancy factor has to carry on throughout the entire sales process. You understand? Okay. So that's ongoing marketing. Then we talk about onboarding our members. Number one, don't assume anything. Even if you've surveyed them, even if you know what the problems are, even if you know what they're struggling with, you don't know them. Trust me. Don't assume anything. Make it really, really easy for them to get started. Okay? When somebody signs up for Youpreneur, they get an email straight away with one link and one link only. It says, thanks for joining Youpreneur. We're happy to have you in our family. We always call it a family. Click here to get started. And they go right through to a get started page with walkthrough videos on how to use the community, with suggested content that they should view first and foremost, along with a few links to really, really hot forum posts as well. And we're changing that stuff all the time, obviously, keep it as relevant as possible. You should promote your best content on that get started page, okay? The best content possible. You want to try and get your members to experience early wins. Think about that little needle movement that will be such an obvious win for them. All right? It doesn't matter what it is, but just that one little needle movement, they can say, man, that was worth the $69 right there. I've only been here two days. This is great. And make sure that you build a full on onboarding funnel. Now, some of you might have. A monthly recurring payment for your membership. Some of you might have a quarterly. Some of you might just do annual, okay? Whatever it may be. That period of time is how long you need to serve them on an ongoing basis. At Youpreneur, it's either monthly or annual. And we're about to dump the annual, okay? Our, even though 40% of our members are annual members, we also know that it is also a struggle for people to make the decision to either go monthly or annual, believe it or not. We've talked to people and we get that. So now we're just gonna say we've got one option. No struggle, just sign up. Thank you for playing. An onboarding funnel for us at Youpreneur has eight emails in it. They get two emails, two emails in the first week and then the other ones are sporadically placed out in the, first, uh, in the next three weeks. We wanna make sure everyone knows exactly how to use every aspect of the community. It's all value, value, value. Help, help, help. It's not click here and watch this video. It's we think you're having this problem. If you are, click through to this part of the library and discover this type of content and then hop into the community and tell us what you think it's all about and how we can help you. It's very important to have a strong onboarding funnel. Okay, engaging with your members. Anybody that follows anything that I do online, you know I'm always talking about P2P. Can anybody tell me what it, what it means? Person to person is good. People to people is what I usually say. It doesn't matter. People want to do business with other people. They do. The big brands want to do business with other big brands. But us low life little people want to do business with other people. We do. 
So foster those P2P connections. Lisa is a Upreneur member. And what did I do when I saw you here for the first time? I ran up and gave you a big hug. People to people. She smelt brilliant as well. <laughs> I was like, oh, baby. <laughs> but that's that relationship. And we've been conversing for months inside of the community, but now we get to meet up. A people to people connection, so strong. Please don't take it lightly. Encourage the relationships as well inside of the membership with other members. It's a community after all, right? So on a regular basis, either me or one of my members of staff or other members will actually introduce each other in the forums by tagging and mentioning each other in the forums, saying, oh, hey, I saw you doing something on Facebook Live the other day. You might like to connect with Ian. He's awesome on Facebook Live, at Ian tag. Ian gets a ping. He comes in, and everybody's friends all of a sudden. So encourage those relationships as much as you can. This is like a football team photo, isn't it? It's mad. But this was a membership mastermind that we did with all our Upreneur members that attended Tropical Think Tank. So it was almost half. We only have 50 slots at that event every year in the Philippines. But almost half of the people that come to that event were Upreneur members last year. Pretty incredible, right? My vibe attracts my tribe, not just into my membership, but also to my live events. Encourage those relationships, so huge. Keep them engaged inside. What we do is I have one gal, one lady, who does nothing all day long but stay in the forums and connect people to our content and to each other. If somebody posts something, oh, I'm about to launch my book, has anybody got any tips on how to launch my book well? She goes and says, hey, you might want to check out this process blueprint, this Upreneur workshop, and this Tropical Think Tank keynote. Um, and when you're at it, you might want to have a chat with XYZ. Keep them engaged all the time. Keep them winning small win goals. Every month we have a live mastermind call that I host myself where members get on, and if people can't get on, no problem. Within 24 hours, the replay is available in the community for them to download and, and enjoy that way. But every single month, at the end of those mastermind calls, I talk about the importance of setting small win goals, attainable goals, five to eight every single month. And I do this myself, that allows you to keep that ball rolling in your business growth. Little things, attainable goals. They're not always attached to money as well, by the way. It can be anything. Just keep the journey going. Keep them winning. And when you do all those things, you keep them paying. They're happy. They're happy to remain members. Why wouldn't they be? You're providing value. You're curing entrepreneurial loneliness. You're getting them connected with other people that get it. Why wouldn't they carry on paying? Let's talk about the time-honored discussion of a private forum versus a Facebook group. Now, this is just one man's very strong opinion. <laughs> the pro to having your community discussion on Facebook is that everyone's on Facebook, pretty much, right? The cons, well, <laughs> I could have gone on for like 45 minutes with this. But the cons are very clear. You don't own Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg does, right? You don't own the content that you put on it. You might think you do. And if you've got hundreds and hundreds of members putting content on that Facebook group every day, you don't own it. They don't own it. Facebook owns it, right? You have no real control over Facebook at all. And we know what that feels like. They move the goalposts almost every six months in some way, shape, or form, right? And I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming to the groups. I can feel it. Zuck don't care about you. He doesn't. He's a, I'm sure he's a lovely guy in real life. I'm sure he is. Great husband, great dad, philanthropist, blah, 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 blah. But honestly, he don't care about your business. He's happy to take your dollars, though. He's happy to have you have hundreds if not thousands of people 
utilizing his website that he owns to run your community, but he don't care about you or your business. Not really. Be smart here, guys. Seriously. Don't build your house on rented land. Don't do it, because that's exactly what you're doing. You get people off of Facebook from a marketing perspective onto your email list and into your community, all right? I just wanted to prove this point a little bit, not so long ago. You pay for access to an online community, what do you prefer? Facebook group, paid forum, uh, private forum. Look at that. That's my little comment, that settles it then. End of discussion. No need for it. It's huge, and there was a good amount of votes. It wasn't like 10 people. Don't build your house on rented land. Okay, let's talk about retention, going into the final stretch. Number one, when somebody leaves, and they will leave, don't take it personal. I gotta be honest, I struggle with this. I do. I struggle with it because my time is my most valuable commodity. Would you all agree? Right, we're at a financial blogging conference right here. Money will come and go, we all know this. But your time, once it's gone, once it's spent, once it's invested, you ain't getting that back, right? So when someone comes in, pays me $69 to be part of my membership community, and I go backwards and forwards with them for two or three months, answering questions, giving them feedback on their landing pages, helping them through struggles they might be having, and then they leave, I get a little bit upset. But I don't hold it personally, okay? I met someone just yesterday who was a member for about, three, uh, about four months, and then he canceled. He got what he wanted out of the community. It'll happen. I still gave him a big hug, okay? Wasn't a long hug. <laughs> and for the record, he didn't smell as good as Lisa either. <laughs> Bloody awful, actually. But don't take it personal when people leave, okay? You wanna make canceling easy. Do we have a cancel button? No, we're not that desperate for people to leave. But if you wanna leave, all you gotta do is send us, you know, we have a support request button that they can click. I wanna cancel, and they hit that send button, and we'll cancel the account, okay? And we don't give partial refunds or anything like that. Don't get involved with that. It will give you a bigger headache than it's worthwhile. If you pay on day one and day four, you decide that you wanna cancel, you've got another 26 days of membership. Okay, at the end of the month, you won't get billed again. Make it simple for yourself. Consider a hold policy. We don't have this at Upreneur, but I know plenty of membership sites that do. I wanna cancel my membership. Do you really wanna cancel? Because if you do cancel now, when you come back three, four months from now, which might happen, the price might be higher. If you want, we can hold your membership for you. You won't have access anymore, but we won't be billing you, but you can come back whenever you want at the same amount. I don't really see the point in that. Some people do it though. So consider a whole policy. Always show up on your promises. If you say you're gonna cancel someone, you cancel them. If for some reason, and we've had this a few times, people have canceled on the weekend, they've sent us that cancel email on the weekend, and because my support team doesn't work over the weekend, they come back to work on Monday, we've missed it, and they've been billed again via PayPal, okay? If that's happened, we always refund them. If we got the email before it was canceled with PayPal, or before it was charged again with PayPal, we, we, we cancel the membership, we give them the refund. Always show up on your promises. Don't be that kind of douchebag. Well, you know, you didn't give me enough time. No, they did. It's not, it's not their fault that your support team doesn't work on the weekend, right? So always show up on your promises. And always create a re-engage process. Just recently, at our one year anniversary, we emailed all of the members that have canceled at some point in the last year. And we said, hey, there's been lots of new content, lots of new discussions, and lots of changes inside of the community the last few months. We'd love you to come back and check it out. Here's access for free for a week. Spend as much time as you want tinkering around. Hey, get into the community, have some fun as well. And if you fancy sticking around, let us know and we'll start billing you again at your old rate, okay? I don't need the extra bucks that badly, at the old rate, but that re-engagement process is important too. So, in a nutshell, it's not for anyone, 
it's not for everyone rather, okay, this business model. I love it. It's the best thing I've ever done for my online business because it's recurring, it's predictable, it creates fandom, it creates community, it allows me to help people and serve people in the way that I know best, that by the way, only I can serve them as well, because I am an original. There's only one Chris Ducker. There's plenty of business coaches, there's plenty of experienced entrepreneurs out there that can help you grow your business, but nobody does it like me. And I know that when people stay in, and they become member, and, and, and they, they come to my events, and they hang out with me, and they do all those things, that's family, man. That's family. And in business, we, we, we make things complex too often. Life is too bloody short. Have some fun, make some money, and help people along the way, and you'll be much happier. The world will actually be a better place if you can build a business that you can be proud of. Would you agree with that? If you're proud of what you're doing, then the people involved in your business is also going to be proud as well, right? Okay. That's me. Let's do some questions. You good? Thank you. Now, my first question, if I may, you're going to be first. But let me ask you a question very quickly before I start taking a few for the next 10 minutes. How many of you now are going to seriously consider starting a membership site for your business? Great, about 60% of the room. What's wrong with the other lot of you? What's... <laughs> that was a good presentation, wasn't it? I mean, right, okay. All right, first question, darling. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, cool, great question. So for the purpose of the video with the audio, uh, who are the critical team members that you need to put something like this together? First and foremost, my spouse, okay? A lot of work involved with this, and she's 100% supportive of what I do. She's my biggest fan, and I love her to bits for it, okay? I do have to take her shopping regularly <laughs> to keep her happy, but, <laughs> but the spouse is very important, okay? First of all, if you're not married, then you haven't got that problem. So, secondly, number one, Day-to-day -day comms with my members as one of my VAs. She's in there, she's managing the support email, and she'll even go into the community and tie people together and connect with people as well. And then I have my marketing slash community member who handles all of the publishing of all of the content or the curating of that content. Uh, I shot four videos yesterday for our expert chit-chat segments. So that's four months worth of that type of content that I've got in the bag now. It goes to my video editor. You might not need a video editor. The process blueprints, like I said, are beautiful PDF documents. Graphic designer. I create all of the written content, and then I, I pass it on to someone else. So there's only really two or three roles in terms of full time that you need to run a successful membership site. Now, if it gets to the point at some point in the future where you've got 5,000 members, pretty sure that team will grow a little bit. But ultimately, to get started, to go through the first year, to get successful and make money, you only need two or three people. Number one, really, is that community manager. That's the most important, because that's the person that kind of ties everything together. And then a VA or virtual assistant to help you kind of manage the content side of things and make sure everything goes live at the right time. Good question. Yes, sir? Nick. Great, yeah, so this month, uh, this month, the whole month of September, on my pod, see, what I like to do, I like to segment my marketing ideas and trials, right? So they might do something completely different on the blog to what I do to my email list, to what I do on my podcast. So this month, uh, at the Upener FM podcast, um, we've been trying a trial that we've never done before. It's the seven for seven trial. So you pay $7, and he gets seven days access. After that, you instantly get billed $69. And it's working. It's working. We've had about 40 people sign up so far in September. So I'm quite happy with that. Will we continue with it? I don't know. But right now, it's working well. We might try it, putting it into the autoresponder. Try it by the email. But that certainly, see, I don't want to give free trials away, because that discounts the quality of what I do. 
I don't like free. You give stuff away for free as an opt-in, great. But if I'm gonna put all this time, energy, and money into a membership site, I'm sure as hell not gonna give it away for free. But I'm happy at a dollar a day for one week for you to get in and try it out. And if you don't like it, you don't have access no more, but at least I've made myself enough money to buy a couple of Starbucks. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so every week, uh, the Chris Ducker mail list, which you can sign up for if you want, chrisducker.com. If you do, you'll actually get access to our three video training course called the Upana Launchpad. It's pretty good content. Hashtag, just saying again. Um, and uh, once, that go, once people sign up for that, they go into a funnel. And at some point throughout the course of that funnel, depending on what email they may or may not open, they'll get a pitch for Upanair as well. So that's, that's ongoing. That's totally passive. I don't have to deal with that at all. Yeah. Yes, sir. So we uh, built everything on WordPress. And then uh, we use what they call the Memberoni theme, which is from the guys at membershipsiteacademy.com. Great guys. Sincerely, I want you to check them out. They helped us build Upreneur. Uh, Mike Morrison is the guy that runs that business. And it's a membership site for people with membership sites. Okay? And it's brilliant. Membershipsiteacademy.com. The guy's name is Mike Morrison. Really good guy. You had a question, sir. What kind of market Yeah, so we, God, I, I'll have to have a look at the solid numbers, but. We have a churn rate, which means people leaving based uh, over people staying. We have a churn rate of about 15%, which is a little high, okay? You wanna try and get it under 10% or as close to 5% as you can. But I'm not concerned with that churn rate at this point because we're only a year old, we're still finding our way, and we're still honestly tweaking things to the point where we're getting the right kind of people to come in. Um, when we first started Upreneur, it was available for anyone that wanted to grow an online business. And that's where the churn problem began, because it was for everyone. About four or five months in, we kind of retweaked our marketing message a little bit and started focusing on personal brand entrepreneurs. Speakers, authors, bloggers, coaches, experts, consultants, anybody building a brand or a business around themselves and their expertise. And since then, the retention, I mean, if I, was to, if I was to break down those numbers between people that joined before that kind of reset point and those that have joined since, I'd say that those that have joined since that tweak are probably closer to the 5%. So I'm very happy with that. It's, you've you've uh, nudged me, David. I'm going to get my team to pull the numbers on it because I'd like to know where we are with that. So yeah. But on average, you want to be between that 5 to 15% churn rate. Yeah. Yeah. So this will be my last question because we're all coming people in, uh, people coming in for the next session. So yes, you definitely want to survey your people that leave, and we just do it with a very very simple email. It's one of the beautiful things about getting them to email us and ask us to cancel, we can reply saying, no problem, we'll do it for you, but can we ask why? Give us anything, we're not gonna hate you, just let us know why you wanna leave. So that's the first thing. In terms of the publishing of the content, it's just like any other piece of content, whether it be a blog or a podcast, you put together a solid you know, uh, content uh, calendar, and you just, we batch like crazy, so we'll work hard for a month or two, and then in terms of the, the annual uh, content that we give out month to month, we don't really have to do a whole lot of work. So it's just when I travel, I shoot the videos with people. Right. When I'm not traveling, I don't have to because we've got tons and tons of stuff in the bank already. Yeah, you. you're more than welcome. And thank you everybody for coming and checking me out. Appreciate it. <laughs>